Psalms 14 and verse 7. God is determined and he's insistent that you must smile tonight. You must see the joy of the Lord at work in your life. The Bible says, Oh, that the salvation of Israel were to come out of Zion. The salvation of Israel always comes out of Zion. It is the salvation of his people, but there is a place where it comes out of. The healing of his people, his Israel, it comes out of Zion. The lifting of his people comes out of Zion. The psalmist was praying and he said, send the help from his sanctuary. God is everywhere, but he does not visit people everywhere. God is everywhere. He is omnipresent, but he does not visit people everywhere. There are people, there are places that by covenant have been consecrated and ordained of God and by God to be the place for encounters. Are we together? In Genesis 28, the Bible says Jacob came to a place called Luz, a place that had been consecrated by his father Abraham. And the Bible says that when he came, I mean his grandfather now, he found that place and he lay to sleep and he had an encounter because there was a consecration upon that ground. Hallelujah. And so God has granted us the privilege and he has made this house one of those platforms to serve his grace to the nations and to bring supernatural extraordinary solutions. I assure you again by God that you are in for an unforgettable encounter. That everything that followed you here that is inconsistent with the provisions of redemption, inconsistent with the character of Christ, you will watch it as it drops finally. Our dear believers in this place, you will watch it as it drops finally. For no matter how long it's hung on to your life and destiny, at the instance of God's word, it will drop finally. The Bible says it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Hallelujah. It is for the intent of freedom that Christ has set us free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Alright, so just a charge and then we'll be praying. We're going to pray tonight and God will grant us grace. And I trust God that there would be an avalanche of great testimonies in Jesus name. The first thing I want you to know tonight as I prepare your heart to receive is that supernatural answers and solutions do not just appear, they are received. Supernatural answers and solutions to any and every problem, they do not just appear, they are received. If you find anyone with an answered prayer, it did not just appear, they received it. Are we together? As simple as this thought is, I want you to think very deeply that supernatural solutions and answers do not just appear. Whether it is healing, whether it is breakthrough, whether it is favor, whether it is deliverance. If you ever find any believer experiencing the goodness, the power of God, it is not just because it appeared, it's because it was received. Are we together now? And the Bible lets us know that one of the major platforms for receiving from God is prayer. Prayer is one of the platforms that were designed by the intelligence of God himself to afford the saints opportunity to receive from him. Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, um, Verily, verily, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, what things soever ye desire, it says, when ye pray in prayer, believe that ye receive them and thou shalt have them, not without prayer. So prayer is a platform for receiving and making promises manifest. Are we learning now? Everything from setting the captives free, healing the sick, delivering the oppressed, granting prosperity, receiving help of all sorts from God, bringing negative seasons and circles to an end, reintroducing new ones that have been stopped by Satan, all of them are answered prayers, supernatural solutions. But I'm saying that they cannot just appear, they must be received. I want to give you four keys as I prepare your heart. I want to teach you how to receive because many believers do not know how to receive. They want to receive, they intend to receive. 
Hallelujah. As I run through this list, you will find out why many people never really receive from God. In spite of the availability of his presence and his power, the Bible says, as Jesus taught, the power of God was present to heal. But some were healed and some were not. So it was not the absence of his power. Are you ready now? Number one, the first thing you need to understand in receiving from God is that all lasting help comes from God and God alone. Write that down, please. All lasting help comes from God and God alone. You will never receive anything from God when you are you have many options God and other things God and other people God and other idols God and other men that make themselves demigod the condition for receiving from God demands number one first and foremost that you must believe consciously that all lasting all lasting help comes from God and God alone Psalm 121 verse 1 very quickly 121 verse 1 i will lift up mine eyes unto the hills and it says from whence cometh my help verse 2 let's read together one to read my help cometh from the lord which made heaven and earth my help not our help i don't know where you get yours from but my help cometh from the lord which made the heavens and the earth God is a maker. It's not only the heavens and the earth he made. He can make destinies. He can make families. He's a maker. Are we together now? Very important. Psalm 60, 11 and verse 12. All lasting help comes from God and God alone. Psalm 60, 11 and 12. Give us help from trouble. It says, for vain is the help of man. Are you reading that? Give us help from trouble. A man is praying unto the God of the Bible. For vain is the help of man. Verse 12. It says, Though, it says, Through God we shall do valiantly. For it is he that tread down our enemies. Someone say, Help me, Lord. Shout it like you believe. Say, Help me, Lord. One more time. Say, Help me, Lord. Hallelujah. In 2 Kings chapter 5, very interesting story. We'll read from verse 5 to 7. The Bible talks about the man called Naaman. Are we together? That that man was a valiant man. He was a captain of the army under Syria. And he was leprous. And one time they captured a slave girl who served his wife. And she said, oh, that this man would go to Israel. That there is a prophet there that will cure him from that infirmity. Are we together? When we get to verse 5, word got to the king of Syria that such a possibility was available. And the king of Syria wrote a letter to the king of Israel. And he departed. He took all those treasures. And when Naaman got to Israel, verse 6, the Bible says he brought the letter to the king of Israel. Watch what the king of Syria wrote. He said, when this letter was come to him, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant unto thee, that thou mightest recover him from his leprosy. The king was afraid. Verse 7. And it came to pass, when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make alive? Am I God that this man doth send me to recover a man of his leprosy? So even though he was king, he acknowledged that there are things that only God can do. Are we together? The king sent a letter, make sure that Naaman returns back well. And he said, this man is only using leprosy to cause another trouble again. Let me tell you the truth. There are things that men can do. They are not miracles. You don't clap for me for walking. It is natural to walk. It is human to walk. It's not supernatural when I cry. It is human to cry. But there are things only God can do. That looks like what God is doing tonight. Shout amen. amen. Shout a louder believing amen. amen. There are things men cannot do. There are things only God can do. Many of us are here tonight to encounter things only God can do. 
You left men at home, but you have come to God because men are great, but they are very limited. Even if you are the king of Israel, when it has to do with the business of curing Naaman, only the God of heaven, I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus. What men have tried to do, sincerely so, and could not be done, today may the God of Israel, the real king of Zion, may he do it cheaply in your life. May he do it cheaply to your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 127, 1 and 2. All lasting help comes from God and God alone. Read with me. 1, 2. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Uh -huh. Except the Lord watch or keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. Verse 2. It says, it is vain for you to rise up early and to sleep late. Only to eat the bread of sorrow, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. You want to receive from God tonight? Look beyond Joshua Selman. You want to receive from God tonight? Look beyond Koinonia. We are vessels, but he is the God of heaven. They looked unto him and the Bible says their faces were lightened. There is no disappointment when you look unto him. Is someone hearing? You heard the testimonies. It looks like it is men producing the testimonies but every man knows that you are incapacitated if you ever have the power to extend the possibilities of God it is because God by mercy has granted you that grace are we learning number two the second thing you must know if you want to receive from God is that God is a loving father and a giver who desires the well-being and the joy of his children. A long statement, but I will repeat it. You need to get this. In addition to knowing that all help comes from God, you must be conscious of the fatherhood of God, that God is a loving father, and he's also a giver. I told you that the hallmark of fatherhood is not bearing children. According to scripture, the hallmark of fatherhood is the ease to give. If you being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your heavenly father, are we together? Will give the Holy Spirit and Mark chapter 7 and verse 11 says give good things, good things, good things. God is a loving father and a giver who desires the well-being and the joy of his children. So don't ask tonight, does God want to heal me? It's an insult on the fatherhood of God. Don't ask if God wants me to rise. Don't ask if God is happy that I am poor. Are we together now? Everything that is inconsistent with the character of true fatherhood, you must contend that it changes in your life. God is a good God. God is a loving father. He is also a giver. Romans chapter 8 and verse 32. I like this. Romans 8 32. The fatherhood of God. Romans 8 32. Media help us please. Romans chapter 8 and 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. He says, how shall he not with him also give us freely? How many things? Shout it. Say all things. That includes healing. Say all things. That includes restoration. Say all things. That for your sake, God did not spare Jesus. For your sake, when Jesus cried and said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, Father, with all the love you have for me, you still turn your face. He said, I love you, but for the sake of man, I will sacrifice you. If he gave Jesus, is it a healing he will not give you? If he gave Jesus, is it a lifting he will not give you? If he gave Jesus, is it ending yokes of curses and delay that he will not bring? You must be conscious of the fatherhood of God. It matters that you know who the... Listen, your confidence is based on the awareness of the benevolence of the person you are pleading to help you. Are we together now? If you hear that, go and collect 20,000 from this man. The first question you ask is, is he a giver? Is he used to giving? Who did he give to? How easily did he give? Ah, no, 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 this man, he will give you anything, including his heart, and you will go with confidence. Sir, please help me. I hear you like helping men, 
But there are a few people, if they say collect five naira from them, you say, no, I'll go and walk. This man does not give anything. God is a giver. The proof that he's a giver is that he did not spare Jesus. Are we together now? He did not spare Jesus. He would have given one angel or given whatever. He said, Jesus, you are my son. You are God. But because of the love I have for man, you will die. And not even the tears of Jesus changed his mind. That's how determined he is. I'm praying for you. You will experience the fatherhood of God tonight. Listen. Let faith rise in your spirit. Because some of you, as you are listening to me now, you will check that pain and see that it's gone. God is a giver. Did you hear me? God is a giver. Whether you are inside, outside, all the overflows, connecting online. God is a good father and he's a giver. He's not a cruel person rejoicing that you are not able to pay rent. You are a father with five children. How does it give him glory that you are incapacitated? Everything that insults the fatherhood of God in the world of men must become your project tonight. Are we together? Yeah. By the privilege of God's grace, I have many people under my care that I take care of. I've taken care of them for years. I have the honor of contributing uh, to communities. And I know how responsible I feel over those that I have the privilege to take care of. When they call me and say, Daddy, they've increased our school fees. I won't get angry at them. It's not their fault. If you have assumed the position of Abba, it comes with that responsibility. Are we together? There has never been anybody I recall under my care and fatherhood who come, maybe they increase my rent and they increase school fees. And I'll say, you must be stupid. It's not the fault of the person. That's why he's the son and you are the father. So when you come before God and say, God, look what is happening. I cannot pay my rent. That's why I'm coming to you. Let me tell you, every time you believe God, you put pressure on his fatherhood. That because you have trusted him, who am I speaking to? That you traveled all the way. You didn't just come to meet Joshua Selman. You came to meet your father. And your father is the king of Zion. He's a mighty God. Father. Most people do not receive because they do not know who is giving them. They, when it has to do with receiving from God, you don't think him as God. It's a family affair. The prodigal son remembered that he had a father and he said, no matter how far I have gone, my father may be a CEO of a company, but I'm not going to a CEO. I will arise and go to my father. If you go to the warrior, you will not receive anything. The warrior fights, he does not show compassion. Are we together now? God is a warrior, but tonight he's chosen to be father. In other words, he's saying, my child, let me hear from you again. What did you say has been threatening your joy from January till June? And you say, God Almighty, my biological father just died this year. And I'm the first out of eight children. There is no way I can rise. Vain is the help of men. I have come to you. And he says, step back. Since you have called me father, let me show you what a good father does. I've tasted of the fatherhood of God. Let me tell you, he's a faithful father. There are many fathers here. It becomes an insult on your reputation if they find your children roaming around the street. Are you not the child of so-so-so and so? He said, yes, sir. Where is your father that is allowing you to do this? There are certain people because of the status of their parents, the children never have to go through certain things again. Am I right on that? When others are queuing, the father can hold them because he owns the company. I've seen children, I've seen people come to look for a CEO and they are waiting at the reception and the child of that man will run and push them and open the door. No secretary, no PA. He did not come to see a CEO. He came to see father. Everybody's trying to behave himself to get the job. Let me conduct myself before I lose the job. And the boy comes. Not disrespectful but confident. And he opens the door and says, Daddy, I'm hungry. And what they labor to prepare in the kitchen, he says, my son, sit down and eat. You want to receive from God? 
you must know that you are not receiving from one of those deities god is not just a better deity than other demons christianity is the only faith practice where god relates to men as father every other faith practice demands obeisance and demands meeting god as a stranger you are not even sure you may die in the process but he's chosen to draw us he calls us sons he calls us children he doesn't just call us citizens or members it is true that he's king it is true that he's warrior but he's father someone say father that is a name that is a very expensive name we live in a world where people assume that name that name comes with enormous responsibility when you ever assume the name father that means I have accepted the responsibility of seeing to the welfare of that child. The prodigal son's father sat down. He said, even though my son has misbehaved, but I am father, will I leave that boy that way? Do you know the prodigal son did not meet him at home? In my opinion, if the prodigal son met the boy at home, we will have a right to query the man because he has an advantage of age and experience. As the prodigal son was looking for him, he was also looking for his son. They met somewhere and the man never spoke to him about what he did. The Bible says while he was a great way off, the father saw him and had what? Compassion. And saw him and fell on his neck and kissed him and said, my son, let's go. You are smelling, but you are still my son. You are lean, you've lost weight, but you are still my son. Most likely sick, you need to see a doctor, but you are still my son. I will hold you and cross the rivers with you. If people look at you and say, is this not the boy that we knew years ago living a riotous life? He will say, it is a family affair. It's not you he offended. I am the father. It is a family affair. He didn't offend the community. I'm the one he offended. And if I've chosen to hold him back home, then who can lay a charge against God's elect? Are we together? Is someone learning? Someone say, I receive. I receive. We receive by having the consciousness of the fatherhood of God. I tell you, if you understand these principles I'm sharing with you, you will begin to see miracles already happening. Because when the revelation of the fatherhood of God hits you, doubt and fear will go. Hallelujah. We have our children here. I always make that example. For many of our children, their service starts after the grace. They are just waiting to share the grace so they stand behind. I hug every single one of them and sometimes give them gifts before I start attending to people. Do you know why? Because they are children and they are happy. They've never been conscious of whether they are dressing well or not. It's none of their business. As soon as the grace is done, they run and they stand happily a big hug and sometimes they ask me to bring down my ears they want to tell me something i am your apostle but that one is father they are not talking to a man of god bend your ears there's something i want to tell you i just wrote my exams and i passed and i say you mean it you passed find something and give them there are listen with god there are no illegitimate children are we together now with God, there are no illegitimate children. Provided you come to Jesus, he receives you. Are we together now? Presents you to the Father and like him, you are called son. So he is the firstborn among we, the begotten. Are we learning? James 1 and verse 5. James chapter 1 and verse 5. He said, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God that give it to all men liberally. Liberally. A version, I think NIV says graciously. Or is it the English standard version or thereabout? Graciously, generously. God does not just give carelessly. Yeah. He gives graciously and he gives generously. That means when you say, God, I'm hungry. You better be prepared for what you receive because he gives according to his riches according to his riches 
even for strangers he commands the rain to fall upon the just and the unjust talk less dealing with those that is a family affair everybody say God is my father one more time say God is my father so whether it's healing whether it's deliverance whether it's open doors you are approaching Abba Pata the source sustainer protector defender number three the third key to receiving from God are you ready we receive answers from God listen first by asking in prayer I'm teaching you the laws of receiving we receive answers from God first in prayer you cannot receive from God outside of prayer we receive from God by asking in prayer we receive from God first by asking in prayer Psalms 34 and verse 17 we receive from God by asking and that in prayer Psalm 34 17 we receive from God by asking in prayer let's work together media can we get Psalm 34 and verse 17 the righteous cry and the Lord hear it and deliver it them out of how many say all the righteous cry and the Lord hear it the righteous cry the psalmist said if I cherished iniquity in my heart the Lord would not hear me when I pray but here it is he says the righteous cry and the Lord hear it and deliver them out of all their troubles we receive answers from God by asking in prayer Mark Matthew 7 and verse 8 Matthew chapter 7 and verse 8 Matthew 7 and verse 8 for everyone that asketh receiveth there is a guarantee that provided you ask you will receive he never said everyone in need will receive you have to verbalize your need vocalize your need by asking in prayer everyone that asketh receive it can i give you two more scriptures first john 5 14 and 15. a beautiful worship team sang it first john 5 14 and 15 and this is the confidence that we have in him that if 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 we ask anything if we ask healing according to his will if we ask for lifting according to his will if we ask for open doors restoration according to his will my bible your bible says he heareth us next verse he says and if we know that he heareth us whatsoever we ask we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him john chapter 16 and verse 24 he says he that told you have asked nothing in my name he says ask and ye shall receive are you seeing it now now most believers have needs but they do not know that asking is the seed for receiving ye have not because he asked not he says he that told you have asked for nothing ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full is someone ready to ask we receive answers from God first by asking first by asking first by asking Mark 11 24 what things soever ye desire we read it earlier on when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and ye shall have them whatsoever things ye desire when you pray asking in prayer someone say I will ask go ahead say I will ask when it's time to pray don't keep quiet regardless the kind of anointing present don't be silent regardless the ministry of angels don't be silent and don't ask for some and leave some the bible says what thing soever if it's a job ask it give me this day my daily bread your daily bread is not food it's everything that makes for your sufficiency and efficiency and it says god gives it daily not monthly daily can I tell you if you are not willing to ask if you are ashamed of asking even in the world of men you will never receive am I right on that 
for everyone that asketh receive it tonight is a night to ask tonight is a night to ask don't just say father visit me generally that is careless asking you ask with intelligence are we together let this plague oh god mention it plague of crying i see things just when i want to receive them they evaporate let it end everyone that ask it why is it that people vow that i will i will visit you call me on thursday you call by thursday morning they say i can't remember calling you if you call me again I'll, you'll go to jail and you're saying sir but on monday we spoke i can't remember you your space has been taken by another tonight is the time to ask lord what is this this disfavor hanging around my life you are father when you wanted a colt that no man had ridden on listen let me tell you the truth tonight's miracle service if you open up your heart you will be surprised what god will do someone who is tired of where they are listen someone who tonight is not the night to allow things continue oh so this is the key i have been desiring but not been asking i've been desiring but not been asking i've been wishing wishing is not asking no wishing is not asking having a strong desire is important but it is not asking you are only entitled to receive when you ask lord show me favor Jabez said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Jabez would have said, look at what my mother did for me. That is not asking. That is complaining. And that's how many of you have approached God. God, look at what is happening in Nigeria. I understand. I sympathize. But that is not asking. Father, you said the increase of the field is for all. And that even the king is served. In the name of Jesus, I place a demand on my portion. My portion in Nigeria. My portion in Europe. My portion in America. You are father. The earth is the Lord. That my portion be delivered to me. That my portion be delivered to me. You are a God of portions. There is a Rehoboth attached. A Rehoboth for me. My portion be delivered to me.